the very beginning when the Lord spoke to me to create the jewelry because of Proverbs 3, at the same time I read also um, Psalm 51, I will teach sinners your ways and transgressors will come back to you. And I felt the Lord is calling me to teach his word and to spread his word. But because I was so young in the faith and all I knew is how to make jewelry. If I was a dancer, I would dance his word. If I was a painter, I would paint his word. But I was a jeweler. So I used what I had and I decided to carve the word of God onto the pieces of jewelry itself. <laughs> After you checked already a few things and nothing really worked, it makes me, it makes you feel like, uh, depressed, you know, you don't know what else. I tried everything, nothing works. I was rich, I was poor, I was married, I was divorced, I was in yoga, I was in this, in that, in the art. And actually what was very difficult for me is that because I stopped designing and I'm an artist, if I don't work and I don't design, then it's like part of me is dying. And I met a woman at that time that uh, told me to read the New Testament. So I read the New Testament and I thought this is for Christians, this is not for me. But what it did, it brought up a recognition that I also have a Bible as a Jewish person. So I took a Bible and I started reading. I didn't know at the time that there are Messianic Psalms. And I was drawn to the Psalms because, you know, there's such a, um, a voice for loneliness and for hardship and such a cry for God. And when I started reading the Psalms, I found it really relaxes me. But then I came across passages that a light bulb went in my head. Wait a second, I read this in the New Testament. How can it be that the Psalms are talking about the same men I read in the New Testament? So something started in me and I didn't know that the Holy Spirit can actually guide a person through the scriptures unto salvation. And one day when I opened Deuteronomy and I read how the Lord hates uh, Deuteronomy 18, how the Lord hates the sin, I took all this uh, uh, stuff that I had from India in the New Age and I threw it away. I didn't know again that it's called uh, repentance, but I was going through it without knowing the theological terms, but it was happening to me. So I started repenting and uh, I started to feel lighter every day, you know, and then I came across Psalm 89 and I was shocked. It was written right there that this is the anointed one and I knew it was Yeshua. So I didn't know what to do. I called my, my, my friend, this woman, and I asked her, what should I do? And she said, if you feel that he is your Lord and Savior, just give him your life. And that's what I did, and everything changed from that point on. The power of the word was very evident to me because I was saved through the scriptures. So I knew there's power in the word of God and the love that God shed into my heart for his word was immense, was intense. As an artist, as a designer, you create from your inner world. So for me, it was evident that I should create from this inner world but I didn't know exactly what to do. 
And I just prayed, God showed me, and again, and again, when I pray and I open the Word of God, God is speaking to me through His Word. And what I saw is, I came across Proverb chapter 3, Grace and truth will never leave you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. Immediately as a jeweler, I understood I should design pendants. So I started with that. Sometimes the verse makes me uh, want to design something and sometimes, sometimes I have like a vision of a design and then I look for a verse. So it's not dogmatic, you know, it's very free. But then what I do is I um, uh, put it on the wax. Wax is like, like a big chunk of soap, which is very easy to carve. And I carve the word and the design out of a, of a chunk. And you know, sometimes the Lord is also carving us out of a chunk of all the stuff we bring with us. So it's, a very, it's very therapeutic actually to do it and to think about the process that the Lord is having us go through. There's a lot of work that goes in every piece because it's not just the cleaning uh, and also the, the shaping. Uh, it's also the beading, it's also the um, uh, gold plating or gold soldering on it. But when everything is uh, done, then I also pack it in a very unique um, way because I feel it's a precious thing, not because it's precious metals, because it's the Word of God and I want to give it the respect it needs to get. So the box is designed with verses. Each piece comes with my testimony in it when you give it as a present to someone. And actually the Lord took it in a very unbelievable way, you know, or actually it is believable, but supernatural, from Israel, from this tiny place that I live in, uh, to the United States, to Europe, to South Africa, to Singapore, to New Zealand. And sometimes I meet people even one time I was in the United States in New York and I was going in the street just like that and suddenly I saw someone with a pendant that I made. It's just, it makes you realize that God is in it. It's supernatural. <laughs> Like uh, Paul was making his tents with Priscilla and Achilles until, until, it's a very important word, until it was time to devote himself totally to the Word of God. So I was making everything at the beginning, everything, the whole process by myself, and I had few people helping me. But the more I got involved with the teaching on the internet and also in, in, in um, Bible studies, I, I had to give it away to be made in a workshop so that I can free more time to the teaching, but still I continue to design because this is what I, I feel is from God. I believe 
that knowing the, your purpose or knowing your calling is not everything. You also need the timing from the Lord. We should never run ahead of Him. We should go after Him. So I was waiting. I was waiting for 16 years, praying about it and studying all the time. At the age of 43, I went to university to get my first BA uh, 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 degree, bachelor degree on Bible studies. Then I went on and got my master degree in Bible study. Now I'm finishing, God willing, my PhD in Bible studies. So I knew it's a process. Not that the Lord cannot speak to me directly, but I felt He wants me to be professional, especially here in Israel, that you need to know how to answer a lot of questions uh, um, when it comes to the Torah, the, five, the first five books of the Bible, uh, comparison with the New Testament. And I especially wanted to be very familiar with the Jewish roots of the faith. I felt very strongly that my ministry, my teaching ministry, should be an internet teaching ministry so that every, because a lot of people like I used to be just searching searching for something so they can come across this teaching and it can make them aware of the Word of God. When you wear a piece of jewelry and you go to the supermarket, someone may look at the pendant and ask, oh, this is so nice, what's on it? Because they see something is written there, but they can't quite know what it is. So here, you have an open door to start a conversation about the faith. So first of all, it's, a, it's like evangelism in a way, but in a very personal and, and very quiet and, and small way, which is woven into our little lives when we stand at the bank or when we park the car or when we do our daily stuff. If we wear His Word, um, it can give someone else an inspiration uh, to read it also. But also I feel many times that the promises of God are so important to us to remember when we are in a bad state, when it's really tough to remember that the Lord promised us something. And then it's a reminder for us because many times I feel myself that I want to hold on to the promises, not just in a spiritual way. It just kind of reminds me, this is what he says. Remember, you're not alone. He's with you. He will never forsake you. He will never leave you. He will give you peace, all his promises. So I make a lot of jewelry with the promises of God. <laughs>